All right, the train. The question is what part of the train is going backwards with respect to the Earth while the train moves forward? And there's a whole bunch of details given uh, with respect to the Earth, uh, regardless of the speed of the train, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I, I hope I'm interpreting the question correctly because I'm not certain of this answer, but I, I think it makes sense to me, at least. I'll, I'll be curious to see what everybody else thinks. But uh, I, I don't think that there is any part of the train that does quite what was described. If I'm wrong, I'd love to find out. But uh, I think that there is a point that will always have some part that is moving in the opposite direction from the, the direction of the train. But that, that one part uh, is, is not really a, a part per se. I'll, I'll explain what I think the answer is. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but this is the best I got for you. OK, uh, let's start with a wheel that is just on the ground. Now, assuming that the wheel's not sliding, I'm going to say that right off the get-go. Uh, if, if you allow for sliding, uh, you could say, well, um, if it was sliding, then, then a part of the wheel is certainly moving backwards, if we take that as the forward direction, uh, with respect to the Earth. But I, I'm not going to go for that. I, I think that that would be a, a, a too easy of an answer. And it wouldn't really be consistent with the description where it happens no matter what the train is, and it can continually happen, and so on and so forth. So I'm not going to go with that. If it's not sliding, then different parts of the wheel will be moving at different speeds uh, with respect to the Earth. In particular, uh, if the center of the wheel is moving at a speed, let's say, or a velocity really to the right, uh, a velocity v1, let's say, then any point that is above that point will be moving with a velocity with respect to the Earth greater than v1. And any point below that would be moving at a velocity less than v1 all the way down to where the two surfaces meet, where if there's not sliding happening, uh, the point that is in contact with the surface will not be moving at all. OK, so here's what that means. As an object rolls, different points will have different velocities, generally speaking. The points that are highest will have the greatest velocity. The points that are lower will have lesser velocities. And the point that is right at the bottom will have zero velocity with respect to the Earth. That's why it's not sliding. Now, notice that in everything I just talked about, <clears throat> no part of this wheel would be moving backwards. No part of it. But that's not quite how a train wheel works. Uh, a train wheel is not just a cylinder rolling on a flat surface. Uh, there's an important, important difference here. And I'm going to try to model that here with uh, my handy dandy paper plate here. So uh, a train wheel actually has a flange that flares out beyond the surface of the wheel that would be in contact with the track. So let me grab a little bit of tape here and try to come up with a kind of a, a model of that. Okay, so just a bit of tape there. And a bit of tape here. That should work. Two more pieces of tape. <clears throat> there. And last one, just to hold it somewhat securely. That should work well enough. Okay, so, not at all. All uh, right, hopefully that'll work well enough. Ah, the tape is not sticky to the paper very well, but it works. All right, so, if I, if I represent this edge that is closest to the camera uh, as being representing the track, then the wheel would sit on the track, but there would be a flange. And even though this is not necessarily correct, uh, let's just assume that this flange is closest to the camera here, just for visual sake. OK, now, there is a black mark there. All right. So the, uh, the wooden wheel is sitting flat on the surface here, the, the track, if you will. Now, as this rolls along forwards, let's say, camera point of view, uh, forwards that way, I'll just back it up here then something really interesting does happen. As the wheel rolls forward, there's no point on the wooden part, the, the wheel part, uh, that is actually moving that way with respect to the Earth. But that pattern that I described earlier actually does continue. As you shift below the center, that, that axis of rotation, as you shift down, the velocity does shift. It is, um, it's a vector that way that becomes less and less and less and less and less zero at the point of contact. And if you continue below that point of contact, it continues that pattern. It actually shifts in the exact opposite direction, which means that it would be moving opposite of the train. The train's moving forwards. Points below the contact of the track would be moving opposite. Now, the reason I said earlier that I don't know if that quite fits the description of there's a part, uh, certainly there will be 
the point on the wheel that is below where the contact is made with the track. That point will always be moving opposite of the, of the train. But of course, as the tire turns, that will be a different part of the tire at different points in its rotation. To help make sense of that, I'm gonna actually show you a simulation. It, it should be very clear with that. Okay, so once again, in interactive physics here, I have a model for a wheel with no flange on it. So this is a wheel. Uh, I have a cross in here just as a visual reference of, of the orientation of the wheel. And I've set the wheel to be moving to the right at two meters per second. It sits level on the surface on which it rests. So this is just normal rolling motion, no funny business of any kind. I'll just show you what that looks like. Uh, the wheel rolls to the right. Uh, there's a little blue kind of point, so you can think of that as maybe a, a spot of paint on the wheel. It's just a, a visual marker for you. Uh, notice that that spot is actually at rest with respect to the earth when it is at the lowest point. It moves to the right at any other point. I'll, uh, I'll reset the simulation and this time I'll actually show you the velocity vector of that particular point on the wheel. By the way, the wheel is moving to the right at 2 meters per second. Uh, that does mean that this highest point will be moving at roughly twice that. I say roughly because this is not exactly exactly at the at the edge there. Uh, but nonetheless, when I run the simulation, you'll you'll see that it, it is pretty much close to that four meter per second. And as it comes down, uh, the velocity vector shifts directions. Of course, it also gets slower and slower and slower and slower. It is momentarily at rest at the lowest point, and then it picks up moving along. Uh, now again, the important thing to stress: I'll reset it and do it again. At no point did this point, this blue point, move to the left. Uh, I'm thinking right is the forward direction of the train, uh, and it only ever moved to the right or, or briefly not at all horizontally, uh, but it never moved to the left, that's for sure. Now, of course, that was the wheel that did not have a flange on it. That's, uh, that's just a simple ball or cylinder rolling along here. Let me show you. I have it sitting just over here, ready to go. The exact same thing, uh, the lighter gray here is exactly the wheel that we, we just saw rolling along here. The blue point is that same visual marker here. This time I've added a flange. This darker gray uh, represents the flange. It's going to roll with the wheel. It's, it's as if it's one solid wheel. But notice that this gray, this darker gray, does sink below the level. And of course, in three dimensions, you can imagine that this, um, this light blue surface here is just behind the flange out, out of our sight, which is why... Um, we're seeing it kind of dipping below that surface. But just behind, you can think that that light gray is resting on this, uh, I guess that would be the track. So let's see this uh, roll along the blue circle, just like you saw before, but check out this yellow little marker here uh, and its velocity. So I'll just run this along here. Uh, so you can see that little blue marker, same as before, but look at that, uh, that yellow one. It's actually going extra fast at the high point. I'm just gonna pause the simulation and I'm just gonna scroll over so we don't lose it. Uh, let it continue to roll here. So that point actually, once it dips below the surface, look at that right there. Uh, I'm going to pause that. It is moving to the left with respect to the earth. Uh, as further confirmation of that, let me just kind of roll back here. Uh, just as a, as a visual reference here, I'll get some kind of uh, lines of reference in here in the, in the simulation. Uh, kind of move along here. So here we go. Uh, those grid lines back there represent the Earth frame of reference. Uh, it's cruising along definitely to the right, to the right, to the right, to the right. And now for that pivotal moment here, uh, it comes along right there. It shifts having backtracked to the left before continuing along here. So that's my answer. The point on the wheel which is below the contact point of the track that point of the wheels will be moving in the direction opposite of the train. That will always be true regardless of the speed of the train. Uh, it will always be true provided that there is such a point flange below the track, which there is on any ordinary train. So that's my answer.